Today, I want to tell you about a Mario anime that you can't watch. It's called Super Mario Traffic Safety, and the story honestly isn't super interesting. It's just designed to teach kids to be safe around roads. But what makes this video so special is the fact that it has never been uploaded to the internet. And that's not because no one's tried. Although Super Mario Traffic Safety is stored in a bunch of Japanese libraries, these libraries have refused to let most people watch the video. And today, I want to explain why. Let's talk about the Mario anime that you can't watch. In Japan, these types of safety videos for kids featuring anime characters are pretty common. There's usually two types of safety videos, traffic safety and fire safety. And so, back in the late 80s, two of these safety videos were produced featuring Mario, one about fires and one about roads. The animation studio who produced these videos was none other than Toei Animation, one of Japan's biggest and longest lasting anime studios. If you've never heard of them, they're the ones behind Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball and One Piece. Looking at the packaging for these two videos, we can see the text Toei Co Limited Educational Video Sales Department. It seems that in the late 80s, Toei had an entire department that worked on these types of educational videos. So. First off, I want to take a look at Super Mario's Fire Brigade, which you can actually watch online. Despite that, there's still a lot of mystery surrounding this video. Off the bat, you'll find no mention of Super Mario's Fire Brigade anywhere on Toei Animation's website, and usually Toei are pretty good at listing all the shows they've worked on. But it's not just that. In the end credits of Super Mario's Fire Brigade, another anime studio is mentioned, Studio Junio. It seems as though Toei Animation may have outsourced the actual animation work to another, smaller studio. But that's enough behind the scenes. Let's give Super Mario's Fire Brigade a watch. So here's how the story goes. A girl called Kaoru and her little brother Tatsuya are playing games on the TV at home. Their mum comes in to tell them that she's about to go shopping, and while she's speaking, Kaoru notices something, some fireworks in the kitchen. So, once their mum leaves, Kaoru and Tatsuya head out into the neighbourhood to try lighting these fireworks. Nearby, Mario and Luigi are doing repairs on their truck when they hear these fireworks going off. But then, something bad happens. A spark from the fireworks causes a fire to break out. Kaoru and Tatsuya panic, but luckily Mario and Luigi run to their rescue and manage to put out the fire. The Mario brothers then scold Kaoru and Tatsuya for playing with fire, warning them that houses can burn down because of loose matches, ovens left unattended, or kids playing with fire. So Kaoru and Tatsuya learn their lesson and go back home. Some time passes, and by the evening, their dad gets back from work, and he is totally drunk. Kaoru starts to run a bath for him while he smokes a cigarette and chats to Tatsuya. But then, the building starts shaking. It's an earthquake. While the whole family starts to panic, Kaoru notices the pan on the stove is about to boil over. To prevent a fire, she tells her mum to turn off the heat, while she runs to the bathroom to turn off the bath. Phew, crisis averted. That is, until Tatsuya notices their dad's cigarette, which has fallen onto the carpet, still burning. In a panic, their dad stomps out the cigarette, and he gets told off by Karu and Tatsuya for not being safe around fire. But just as things have calmed down, Karu notices something outside the window, a fire which just broke out in another apartment. They call the fire brigade, which hurries to the scene of the fire and the two firefighters who enter this burning apartment are Mario and Luigi. They rush in and manage to rescue a mother and her baby who had passed out inside. Mario and Luigi carry the two to safety, where the crowd watching cheers them on. Finally, Karu and Tatsuya approach Mario and Luigi and tell them that they now understand the dangers of fire. Oh, you're and thus ends Super Mario's Fire Brigade. So before we move on to the other safety video, let's step back a little to answer some questions. 
Like, who voices Mario in these videos? This was long before the era of Charles Martinet, who gives Mario the friendly voice we know and love today. It's me, Mario! Well, it turns out that back in the 80s and 90s, Mario had a totally different voice in Japan. He was voiced by Toru Furuya. Now, if you're not super into retro anime voice acting, you might not recognise Toru Furuya's name. But chances are, if you've watched even a little bit of anime, you've heard his voice somewhere. Here's just a few characters he's played. Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon, Seiya from Saint Seiya, Yamcha from Dragon Ball, Amuro from Gundam, and Amuro from Detective Conan, and more recently, Sabo from One Piece. That is a long list of characters, and it doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of the huge list of characters that this one guy, Toru Furuya, has voiced. He is, at least to me, voice acting royalty, and so he was the guy Nintendo chose to voice Mario in the 80s and 90s. He appeared in the animated Mario movie, a bunch of Mario commercials, and yes, even these two educational safety videos for children. So then, let's move on to the second of the two videos, Super Mario Traffic Safety, the anime that you can't watch. For years, the only evidence that this anime even existed was an image of the box the video came in, and a short 30 second trailer. I can't find either safety video mentioned on Toei Animation's website either, which makes finding any more info about this video quite difficult. So because of that, Super Mario Traffic Safety was relegated to being a strange internet legend for a long time. But then, in 2017, all of that changed. And it's thanks to a YouTuber called GTV Japan. In his videos, GTV documents various lesser-known Japanese games and anime, and on the 27th of May 2017, GTV was at a theatre which showed anime for children. Various kids' anime shorts were shown at this event, including, to his surprise, Super Mario Traffic Safety. Now, filming was not allowed at this event, but GTV did manage to sneakily capture about two minutes in total of footage. So, the basic structure of the story isn't super different from Super Mario's Fire Brigade, really. The main two characters are a brother and sister again, though this time the brother is the older one. He and his sister are at home, playing video games, when their mum calls on the phone and tells them to come and meet her outside somewhere. The brother wants to keep playing his game, however, so his sister goes outside on her own to try and find their mum. A little while later, the brother realises that his sister is missing, and goes cycling to try and find her. Cycling into a road, where he's almost hit by a truck which was being driven by none other than Mario. Mario gets out of the car and scolds the older brother for not being careful around roads. Meanwhile, the younger sister is lost. She can't find her mum anywhere. But then, someone finds her. Bowser. In fear, she runs away and manages to find a police officer nearby. And with the help of this officer, the mother, brother and sister are eventually reunited. But then, the sister notices Bowser again, and tells the police officer this time. Bowser then starts running away so as not to get caught when he runs into a road. Cars and bikes have to swerve around him, until, at the last minute, Mario kicks Bowser out of the road saving his life and ending the story. And that is Super Mario Traffic Safety. It doesn't seem so different from Super Mario's Fire Brigade, so then why is this one lost? Well, to be super clear, this video is not lost at all. GTV saw the video in full at the kids' anime event, so there's at least one copy out there. But it's not just that one. Looking online at various Japanese library websites, we can see that Super Mario Traffic Safety is being safely kept in many libraries across Japan. So, why has no one borrowed the video from a library and uploaded it to the internet then? Well, that's exactly what GTV tried to do. But in his words, I tracked the film down. A library near me has a copy, but won't lend it out due to its age and literally, someone might copy it and put it on the internet. In other words, exactly what he was trying to do. <laughs> A Japanese game historian called Orochi posted similar findings. Orochi wrote, If you search for Super Mario Traffic Safety in Japan, you'll find a lot of results. 
Most of them are pages where the local government that owns the site says it will rent the video as educational material to appropriate organisations. I guess a lot of municipalities still own this video because results appear from Toyama, Yokohama, Chiba, Saitama, Aichi and other places I can't even count. However, rental is restricted to appropriate organisations and 16mm film is used so conditions seem to be strict. So for the time being, Super Mario Traffic Safety is a pretty unique case. The anime is not lost. In fact, it's being kept in very safe hands across Japan, we know that for a fact. But if you want to watch the video, then that's a completely different matter. Unless you're a Japanese school, it's unlikely that most libraries or local governments will allow you to borrow this video. But then how did Super Mario's Fire Brigade end up online? Well, this is going into more speculative territory, but I would imagine that although the video has similar restrictions to Super Mario Traffic Safety, one library or government somewhere in Japan allowed the video to be borrowed anyway, when maybe it shouldn't have done, and the person who borrowed the video uploaded it to the internet. Perhaps in the future the same will happen to Super Mario Traffic Safety. There's a lot of libraries in Japan and all it takes is one person lending out the video to a preservationist for it to find its way online. But until and unless that happens, Super Mario Traffic Safety remains a Mario anime that you can't watch. And there's something kind of special about that, I think. Thanks to GTV for allowing me to use his footage of Super Mario Traffic Safety and for answering my questions about the video too. If you want to hear him talk about the event where he saw this anime, I've linked his video below. And thanks for watching until the end, subscribe to this channel for more strange and obscure chapters from Nintendo's history every single week, and I'll see you next time, bye!